So it says Isaiah 9 and 5. It says, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Okay? Because this World War Three is going to be a firefight, as I said before, between Russia and America and all their proxies. Right? That's why you have the stage being set as we see it right now. Again, like I said already, Iran, yesterday they had a nuclear scientist that was assassinated, right? But World War III ain't gonna take place until they roll out the RFID chip, which is known as the mark of the beast in the Bible, okay? That's why they're having a big debate right now about the vaccine, all right? They're basically priming the minds of the people to take the RFID chip, all right? So, um, okay, let me read, let me go back to Jeremiah again. It says the book of Jeremiah 49 and 20. It says, therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he may, that he have against Edom, right? Like I said before, Edom today is known as the so-called um, white race, all right? They've moved away from the biblical nationality, all right? As many nations have, all right? Because that's because they sought to change times and places and also names, all right? So it says, and his, purp and his purpose, and his and his purposes, that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. As I said before, that's dealing with the state of Israel. Okay, the so-called Jews, right? Which are imposters, according to the book of Revelation, the second chapter on the ninth verse. It tells you that that they're basically known as the chief house of Satan, right? So reading on it says, surely he shall make their, inhabit their habitation desolate with them, right? Because basically he's going to destroy, all right? Starting with the state of Israel is going to be destroyed according to biblical prophecy. But then also you're going to have the land of America is going to be destroyed. And you're going to have different places within Europe as well, all right? So it's the book of Zechariah 9 and 6. It says, And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. Right, where's Ashdod? Ashdod today is in so-called the state of Israel. All right? So the bastard that's dwelling over there is talking about the so-called Jews. All right? And this is biblical prophecy. This ain't coming out of my own mouth. I'll read it again. So Zechariah 9 and 6. It says, And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod. All right? Because why? They've taken on the words of the prophecy, but their father is in they're not, they're, they're not, they're basically fatherless, all right? So they're bastards, all right? So it says, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines, which is talking about the land of, um, it's talking about Esau and Edom, right? So reading on, it says, um, and the earth is moved at the noise of their fall, and, and the cry and the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Behold, he, he shall come up and fly as an eagle, and spread his wings over Bosra, and at that day shall the heart of all the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. All right, because why the Lord is going to rise upon there in the midst of World War Three. All right, and that's basically the judgment the Lord is going to put forth. Let me move this around to a more favorable position. This is the book of Isaiah, the 63rd chapter, and the first verse. 
by wreaths. Book of Isaiah 63 and 1. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Bosra? Right, you just heard Bosra being mentioned in Jeremiah the, the, uh, the 49th, uh, 49th chapter. And it's basically this is coincide. Bosra is known as the chief city in the land of Edom, right? And the, today the land of Edom would be, as you know, a people is named after a place. A place is not named after a people. Right, so where it's talking about Bosra is talking about wherever Esau Edom is, right? So wherever the so called white man is, is basically Bosra, okay? And that's why it says this. So it says, Isaiah 63 and 1 it says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Bosra? This that is glorious in his apparel, okay? It says, Traveling in, in the greatness of his strength. I that speak of righteousness, mighty to, be, to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the winepress? Right? So basically it's saying, it's, it's speaking metaphorically, it's saying that the Lord looks like someone as if he, he basically died, he's, he's, he was someone that treads in the winepress. Right? And why is it saying that? Because it's talking about all the blood of various people. Right? Because it tells you also in the book of um, Isaiah, not Isaiah, it tells you in the book of Revelations, the 19th chapter, that on his head was many crowns, right? Why is there many crowns on his head? Because he took out many kingdoms out of their power. How is that going to be done? Is he just going to walk up to them and take off their crown? No, all right? They ain't going to give up with a fight. That's why it tells you in the book of Revelations, the 12th chapter and the 12th verse, that basically um, Esau, knowing that he has a short time, coming down with great wrath all right that great wrath is talking about all these technologies he's going to utilize all right using um these um uh starting with icbm missiles um also what's the other rail guns all these um different forms of technology which are different forms of force he's basically going to utilize that in hopes that he can defeat the lord and his men all right but it's going to come to no avail according to the prophecy of the bible so it says, um, verse 2, it says, Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like them, like him that treadeth in the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and will trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. All right? Why is the day of vengeance in, in the heavenly Father's heart, or say in Yahweh Shai's heart? Because basically he died two days ago, man, according to the count that would be um, in the heavens. All right? So it's fresh in his mind. He remembers how he was slaughtered um, by the Romans, all right? and the shame he went through. shame that he went through in remembrance of that he's basically saying that day that day burns in his heart basically all right so let me read that again so it says um for the day of vengeance is in my heart and the year my redeemed is come right who's the, what's the year of his redeemed that's basically the redeeming of the children of israel all right because if you know anything about the kingdom and redeemer being the um I can't remember the Hebrew word, it escapes me at this moment. He basically talks about if a kin, if your near kin is sold into slavery, right, by way of the law in Exodus, the 21st chapter, then basically if they sell all their stuff, you can redeem them, right, before their time of redemption, right? And basically the Lord is doing that for us. 
because as, as I read earlier, it tells you in the book of um, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that no man shall buy thee, right? And the reason why no man shall buy thee is because they rejoice over our downfall, right? It tells you the same book of Revelations, which I'll read actually to give some give it some depth Revelations 11 and 1 Revelations 11 and 8. Sorry, read. It says, Revelation 11 and 8. It says, And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the, of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the, the people and the kindred and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies. This just made me just think. You know what? Because this sounds like the book of Revelation, the seventh chapter. All right. Now this is gonna. I'm gonna come back to this, but let me read this and then go back to. And funny enough, it's the same verse <laughs> as all as the fifth chapter and the seventh verse. So let me read this again. So this is Revelation 11 and 9. It says, "And they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies." All right. Three days and a half. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. All right. Let me read on so you get the point. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Right. Who are the two prophets they're talking about? They're talking about the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah, being the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So they basically rejoice over them. Why? Because they tormented all the different nations, the different kindreds, the different tongues while they lived upon the earth, when they were in their natural state of being, while they had the, the, the understanding in their mind, all right? But now, <laughs> it's a great rebuttal, man. So now when you go to this, this doesn't make sense. So when you go to Revelation 7 and 9, it says, and this I behold and lo, a great multitude that no man could uh, number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the land clothed in white robes and palms in their hands right and cry with a grout and cry and cried with a loud voice saying salvation to our power which sitteth upon the throne and unto the lamb Right, so why would they rejoice over that? It wouldn't make sense, right? At least they be chosen out of the different nations upon the earth, right? As it tells you in Revelations 5 and 9. Let me read that. So, the book of Revelations, the fifth chapter, and the ninth verse, it says, And they sung a new song, all right? Like, like I read in Isaiah 42, new things that do I declare unto you. Right, because they're singing this new song in Yahweh Shai. And they shall sing, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to Yahweh by thy blood. Right? So even the word redeem means to buy back. So in order for you to be bought back, that means you had to be sold in the first place. So how were they sold in the first place? Because they fell away from the, um, in accordance with the curses of the Bible, and the, and the Lord Yahweh Shai came back and brought them back unto the heavenly Father. All right. So anyway, Revelations five and nine. It says, um, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to Yahweh by the blood. Out by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation all right and has made us and made us unto our power our power possessive all right noun kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth all right 
So basically that shows you what? That this is only for a set amount of people being the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, who are the children of Israel, and also all the children of Israel which are scattered all over the earth, all right? So how do you fit, if those people rejoiced when we when we fell, how would they be, rejo be rejoicing when the Lord redeem us from out of all the kingdoms and nations, all right? They would have had to be in those that are scattered being redeemed unto the Heavenly Father, right? 